First item on the agenda is a request for certificate of compliance uh, for sovereign builders for the self storage facility across from Tom's hot dog stand. Um, we did the site visit uh, uh, just before the thunderstorm broke on us um, on Monday. And um, I'll give my impressions. And then if any of the other commissioners would like to speak, uh, feel free to, to, to chime in. But my feeling is it's too early to give a certificate of compliance for this project, primarily because of the replication area. Uh, I think we need to know exactly how much of that area is now actually has wetlands hydrology. Uh, I was not able to conclude that there was adequate wetlands hydrology when we were there. Uh, with an auger, we went down 18 inches and didn't hit any moist soil or, or water, uh, nor other evidence. Uh, vegetation can be misleading because of the, the seed mixes and, and nursery stock is usually pretty good and can be pretty resistant to change for a number of years. So my recommendation would be to hold off on uh, the certificate of compliance until we go through another spring and we can document that the hydro, uh, or hydrology is appropriate, or if you want to present as built evidence uh, that the wetland is there and, and the size of the wetland meets the, re the minimum required, which is, I believe, 335 square feet, uh, we can entertain that information if you want to submit it at a later date. Um, anybody else from the commission want to want to opine on this subject? I agree with you, Scott, on the delay. I'd like to see, like you said, another year just to see what the soils and the plants look like. That makes sense. Okay. And, and just updating the plan, as you said, the as built, there seem to be some holes in in what we were looking for there. Right, and we also were not able to get back to the back of the property. Take, yeah. to take a look back there at the, uh, at the... Yeah. Mickey or Todd, do you want to respond to our comments? Yeah, I just want to say that. Uh, so so the, the wetland um, mitigation area was, was built to the elevation proposed and approved by the plans. Uh, you know, Todd and his crew uh, planted it with the, you saw the wetland tree shrubs, uh, wetland seed mixes. Uh, over the, It's been uh, growing now for two years. It, it continually uh, floods. It's part of that little floodplain of that river. Um, so we, we know that every time uh, there's a bankful event, it, it does overflow into the mitigation area. Um, you know, other than rebuilding the whole thing I, I i don't know that it's going to change any um if you wait till the spring uh you know it was built at the elevation of the adjacent wetlands it just you know wetland mitigation areas just need time to develop this has been two years it's got about 85 percent wetland vegetation in it you know basically todd built everything you know the um the banks of the, you know, revegetated the banks of the, that little river, revegetated that, you probably saw that, uh, rebuilt the culvert, it was an old undersized culvert over the driveway, everything on the plans were done according to the specifications of the plan. So I'm, I'm just not sure what, what we gain by waiting till the spring when basically he's built everything according to the specs and the plans. Well, usually, um, Go ahead, Todd. It looks like you were about to say sure. something. I'll hold uh, on. To, to add to that, Ryan, um, Ryan Nelson from Arlevec was on site at the time that we excavated, and I, I probably should have had him here tonight as well to guarantee, you know, to 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 um to be certain that we were excavating to the depth that would be necessary to support the wetland vegetation. So. Um, yeah, he was there the entire time we were excavating and, and measured the area and measured the depth, uh, with a, with a, with a transit and, you know, checked soil, um, hydrology. I don't know another terminology, but no, he, he was there to ensure that we were at the proper depth and had the proper area. Yeah. So 
the the plans that you're talking about were plans that you submitted. We did not dictate what depth to go to. We left it to you and your experts to decide what depth would create the wetland conditions that are required by the regulations. Mm -hmm. If the site fails to meet the wetland hydrology standard, it's your responsibility to mitigate that, to, to go back and do it again. Now, I happen, I, I'm not saying that things are going to change by waiting a year. What I'm saying is that we need evidence that it's wet enough. And if you don't have that evidence now, then we may need to wait until you can collect that evidence in order to demonstrate that you met the standards in the regulations. Um, so basically, one of the things that you typically look for in a request for certificate of compliance is an ad -built, as built plan, where you say, okay, this is what we said we would do, this is what we constructed, for a replication, rather than just an as-built plan, what you really want to know is how much of that basin actually is wetland. How does it have wetland hydrology? The beginning of development of wetland soils, does Soil. it have wetland vegetation? And so we don't have any of that information from you as part of this request. When we went out there, we could not determine on our own in mid-August whether it has the appropriate hydrology in order for us to certify it. So that's that's the situation that we're in is and and I'll I'll tell you I I spent a couple of years working with DEP evaluating the success of wetland mitigation projects across Massachusetts and many of them failed uh, over half of them failed to meet the requirements and one of the situations that we found was is that many of the ones that failed to have wetland hydrology did have wetland plant communities and so when you put in a really robust seed mix, when you put in good hardy nursery stock, those plants are gonna hold their own and they're not gonna to yield to upland plants for many, many years. So we need to either have some kind of hydrology information based on soils, or we need to have you know wells, or we need to go out there during a period of time when we can observe that the hydrology is in the upper part of the soils and therefore meets the definition of a wetland. So Scott, it sounds like um, the uh, scientist who did the design of that should go out there, do data points, provide that information to the commission. Right. To document what is wetland and, and based on what condition and how much, how many square footage, what's the square footage of the wetland created? Now the basin itself certainly looks like it's well in excess of 335 square feet. So, you know, we paste it out to say, okay, well, the area that they created certainly looks big enough. What we don't know is, is it wet enough to have 35, 335 in actual meeting the wetland criteria? And, and it does look like it's benched above the wetland adjacent to it. The wetland adjacent to it, very wet. This is like a step up and the, the soils 18 inches down are powdery dry. So I don't know if it went deep enough uh, in order to establish, successfully establish wetland hydrology. Perhaps the flooding that it does in the springtime is enough to maintain that hydrology during the growing season. But at this point, with us going out, going out for a site visit, we couldn't determine that. It was so wet that the grass wouldn't grow pretty continuously until the beginning, you know, until we had sort of, um, fairly dry beginning to our summer um it was it just was so wet it was continuously wet that the seed kept washing away and it was just yeah <clears throat> so i think you've seen it at its driest right and you know we went out there with the expectation that you know we might be able to see that it was wet say fine sign off on it it just we couldn't see enough evidence in our site visit to be able to say, yeah, you were successful. And, uh, you know, in, in the absence of us being able to see it for ourselves, you need to present evidence that it does meet, you know, the requirements. OK. So. Uh, so so, Tom, if it's OK with you, um, why don't we just hold on to this, the request for the certificate of compliance? Uh, we'll provide the commission with additional documentation and 
I have another public meeting uh, once following the submission of additional information for you. Yeah, that sounds fine. I waiting a year, you know, and I know this doesn't matter to in, in terms of, you know, what we're the wetland and it's being established. There's a fair amount of money that's being held uh, in escrow for this uh, by by the you know by the attorneys of the buyer of of the site. So I would really like to not have to wait a year if we can find a path to to do this sooner. And I'm happy to get Levesque, uh Ryan Nelson out out there and and document the things that we're talking about. And hopefully they're they're sufficient, you know. And hopefully it is wet to the point that it, that we're that we've had success. Yep, I hope so too. And we don't have to wait a year. It's just a okay. question of how, however long you need in order to get the documentation, the evidence that it's successful. Sure. Okay. Uh, the, the, only thing, the other thing I'll say is um, if the commission needs to get access to the uh, back of the site, there's a fence there. Um, you just have to coordinate that with Todd. Um, uh, if you want to do another site visit in the back there. Yeah, okay. Well, that's good to know. Um, we were mostly focused on the crossing and the mitigation area, <clears throat> but sometimes it's useful to just to see that the the distance to the wetland is is what it was supposed to be on the plan. So maybe, you know, just to be thorough, we will make that request uh, since we have a, some more time uh, to do that. Okay. All right. Um, um I don't know if we need a vote on this or whether you want to just, you know, tell us that you'd like us to hold off on making a decision until you can supply additional information. Yeah, if, if the commission uh, I would just hold off on this decision uh, until uh, additional information is provided. Okay. Uh, commissioners, anybody have any concerns about that or any questions or other comments? No. No, I'm all set. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you. Um, so you. I'll, we'll wait to hear back from you. Thank you. Have a good night. We'll, we'll be in touch soon, relatively okay. soon. Bye. All right. So next is, um, request for determination of applicability submitted by mass DOT for resurfacing of state road routes five and 10. And, um, I'm not sure who's speaking to this. Um, Billy, are you? Yes, I am. Hi, Scott. How are you? Hello, I'm commissioners. Good, good to see you all. Um, is it okay if I share my screen? Yeah, sure. Okay. It says host disabled participant screen sharing. Um, so. Okay. Let yeah. me take care yeah. of that. All right. Okay, great. Let's have a quick PowerPoint for you all. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, so I'll just be presenting on Waitley Route 5 and 10 resurfacing. Um, this was an RDA filed by the district. Here is just a locus map to show you all. Um, the project limits um, in Waitley are at mile marker 33.26, 3 which does not mean too much to you all, but hopefully you can tell from the aerial where that is. Um, and then it will end at the Hatfield town line. Um, this does not include resurfacing of the bridge, um, which is route five and 10 over I-91. So project need, uh, pavement is due for re routine resurfacing in this area. This project is being performed to resurface approximately three and a half miles of five and 10 in the town of Waitley, with the exception of that bridge over I-91. Um, also part of this project is resurfacing in a portion of Northampton and Hatfield on five and 10 as well. Work activities include uh, re routine resurfacing, uh, the existing pavement will be milled, new asphalt will be paved on top of the existing road surface. Other items that might be included as needed for this project are adjusting and or rebuilding drainage structures, recessed polyurea pavement markings, replacement of any damaged guardrail, replacement of signs and curbing, safety controls, erosion sedimentation control measures as needed, milling mulch for shoulders and other incidental items required to complete the work. 
Uh, resource area impacts. Resource areas within the project footprint include buffer zone to bank to perennial streams, um, buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetlands, and the 200-foot riverfront area. All work is being conducted to avoid impacts to resource areas, and no adverse impacts to resource areas are anticipated. And all of this work is happening within the existing roadway. It's just resurfacing. Um, so here's just a wetlands map of those same project limits. So you can see, um, obviously, the roadway is within the buffer zone to uh, some of those wetlands. And as far as regulatory compliance, this work is considered a minor activity under 310 CMR 10.022B2, which includes pavement repair, resurfacing, and reclamation of existing roadways within the right-of-way configuration, provided that the roadway and shoulders are not widened, no staging or stockpiling of materials, all disturbed road shoulders are stabilized within 72 hours of completion of the resurfacing or reclamation and no work on the drainage system is performed other than adjustments and or repairs to respective structures within the roadway. And that's pretty much it. Any questions? Thank you, Billy. Could you put that slide back up again? Yes. That last slide. Mm -hmm. Regulatory compliance or the map? Uh, the compliance. Yes, that's it. So I just ask just want to ask the question because it wasn't included in the submission yep. that all of those conditions for those two um, um, minor activities that are listed, are those going to be met by this project? Because it yep. was not explicitly stated as so in the RDA. Yeah, there will be no stockpiling because it's just resurfacing. The, so there's no anticipated materials that need to be stockpiled on site. And what about the uh, insta installation, repair, replacement of signs, signals, uh, signal posts, et cetera? Are all of those conditions also going to be met? Yes. Yeah. So we're not planning on it, it, like replacing anything, but we just include that uh, language in our resurfacing projects. So if they come across, let's say, a deficient piece of guardrail that might have been affected by a car accident or something, they'll go and just take that piece out and replace it. So all incidental items, but yeah, everything will be uh, to the minor activities. Okay, and has this work already begun? It has in Hatfield. I have given our maintenance group very strict orders not to cross the town line until we receive our negative <laughs> determination of applicability, um, but they are ready to go as soon as we receive the NDOA. Okay. We have a sign in the center of town that says milling is beginning on August 19th, which was two days ago. We thought, yes, that's yes. interesting. It, is not, it has not started yet in Whaley. I can assure you of that. Okay. Um, uh, commissioners, do you have any questions or, or comments on this? Not me, no. uh, okay, George. No, I, I'm just saying no, I don't. Uh, I see. Did this include those little um, kickouts, like by Tom's and the um, the, the other place there with the with the bus stops? Is that going to include that work too? The little extra paving, or um, I believe actually that is going to be presented um, in the next Mass DOT project that's on. This okay, hearing. so it's separate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is there anybody from DOT here for that next project? Or are you the only one from DOT on the in attendance no, we, right now? We have our uh, consultant, and we also have Melissa Lanker from Boston headquarters who will be presenting on that one. Hello. Okay. Hi. Um, I just I have a beef that I want to or a bone to pick with you at, with DOT, and I thought I would do it while both of you are here so that you can both hear it. This is my curmudgeonly uh, lecture about something that I find really irritating. Um, in both of your applications, you mistake you misstated the issue of sovereign immunity, which flies directly in the face of an SJC ruling in the Boxford case. And I know it's routine for MassDOT to put that wording into all of their applications that says that you have note that municipalities have no jurisdiction over your projects, either with regard to bylaws uh, or um, or fees. That's not true. And I would really appreciate it if you didn't include that language in your submissions from now on, because we went through this when the park and ride was built 
and we got a legal opinion from town council as well as from another environmental attorney. And it's very obvious that the uh, language in that Boxford decision says that sovereign immunity needs to be established on a case by case basis. It's not a blanket sovereign immunity. It can only be invoked if the regulations would be a significant imped impediment to the project going forward. So thank you for tolerating my outburst, um, but it was not an easy process when we dealt with it, uh, DOT back then. DOT eventually did pay the fees necessary to get an independent review. You paid substantially more than you would have paid otherwise if you'd let us go through the process directly. And in the process of that, you know, we got pretty clear guidance from lawyers that that the position that DOT routinely adopts is not defend defensible. If I may, my sure. understanding is that the wording is it has to create uh, if there is more even a negligible effect. But since we are here tonight filing RDAs, I don't think that is the issue at hand. But if either project receives a positive termination and we are back before the commission, we would be happy to address it further. Yes, you're right. It's not relevant to either of your projects. I just object to the inclusion of that language because it seems like it's boilerplate and it's inappropriate. So noted. Thank you for letting us know of your concerns. <laughs> that, nothing personal. Oh, we know, Scott. <laughs> But we fight these fights on many different levels. And, uh, you know, this just one bugs me. All right. So um, for the RDA, for resurfacing uh, routes 5 and 10, uh, I believe that the information presented by Billy Lee is, uh, is accurate in that this would be considered a minor activity and that under the riverfront regs, these minor activities generally won't uh, when they occur in riverfront area will not trigger the need for a filing. Um, and so I would recommend a negative determination of applicability. Uh, any com commissioners, would you like to comment or propose an alternative? I agree with that. No, I'm good. I'm also good. All right. So, uh, all in favor of uh, issuing a negative determination of applicability without conditions, say aye. 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 All right. It's unanimous for the four of us that are here. Uh, so, Billy Lee, you know what our decision is. It may take us a little while to get all the signatures and get it in, in the mail to you, but uh, with a negative determination, it's one of those things where you can proceed at your own risk, provided yep. if somebody were to appeal. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, I, I think we are going to proceed at our own risk, just so you all know, because we're pretty much mobilized and ready to resurface. But thank you all so much for taking the time to listen to my presentation, and I hope you enjoy the next Mass DOT one. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Thank you, Billy. Good to see you. Good. All right, uh, Melissa and Daniel, you're up next for the, uh, the uh, bus stop and sidewalk uh, project. So uh, the floor is yours collectively. Uh, if you, one of you would like to present the project, feel free. Uh, good evening. I uh, just would like to say it's pleasant to be in front of you all. Um, and I do have a PowerPoint similar to the previous presentation that I can share uh, if that is okay with you all. Yeah, let me make you a co-host. There you go. All right. Mm. Should be Let's all set. See. All right. Mm -hmm. It is trying to connect. Melissa, I sent it over to you. Do you could you? See if um, it'll connect. Yeah. Well, I, I guess Scott will have to let you in. Yeah. Give me just a uh, second. All right. Let me. A lot of things open. Yeah. OK. 
Okay, so how do I, sorry. All right, you should have sharing privileges now, Melissa. Okay. Um, there we go, sorry. Can you see my screen? Yes. Can you, hold on, let me uh, put the slideshow on. Dan, are you, uh, do you wanna, I can click if you tell me when, if that works. That works, great. Um, so this is for a bus stop and sidewalk improvement project along State Road in two distinct locations. One is at 233 State Road and one is at 64 State Road. Um, you may recognize these locations. The entire project is located within the state highway layout. Uh, these are the two aerial locus to show where all work is being completed. And you can click. Uh, next slide. Oh, next one. Sorry. Yep. Do you see project need up? I actually can't see the screen anymore. The other screen. Uh, we cannot see project need. Oh, but interesting. The... It, it, it looks like it's not in presentation mode. It looks like it's just the slides. Um, let me see if I do. Oh, I know. I think I know what's going on. I'll do it this way. Apologies. I think it's uh, I'm having some tech issues. Here we go. I know this isn't isn't quite as good, but um, does this work? If we see the uh, the images. All right. Next slide. Are you? Yep. Dan, the you next slide. Will set. It's pretty pretty straightforward. This project aims to enhance the safety and accessibility of these two areas. Currently, they are just roadway shoulders. Um, it's gravel and previously disturbed areas and some manicured lawn. Um, this project aims to make these areas safer for people getting on and off the bus and also more accessible with the addition of ADA compliant ramps. Uh, you can go to the next one. So the work activities will be in two distinct areas. Like I mentioned, one is at 64 State Road and a single sidewalk and ADA ramp will be added uh, for accessibility. Uh, along with a bus pad. This will make it so people can get in and out. Now this is located partially within the 100 foot buffer to BVW, and it is located within the 200 foot riverfront area. Now this area is previously disturbed. Currently it's, it's roadway shoulder and gravel, as I mentioned before, with some manicured lawn. This is right outside Tom's hot dog stand. And location two is both sides of the road near 233 State Road. It'll consist of four sections of sidewalk with associated ADA ramps and two bus pads. There will be a bus pad on either side of the road, making it safe for people to get on and off on either side. Um, now, something I wanted to point out is that in the initial application, we had stated that we would slope the any improvements into the road and towards any stormwater drainage structures. Um, my apologies, that is not correct. There are no drainage structures. So this would be going to the outside of the road, to the roadway shoulder. Um, I just want to bring that to the commission's attention. Um, did not want to misstate the intent. Um, the next slide, Melissa. So the entire project, as I mentioned, is located within the state highway layout. There are areas of manicured grass that will be affected by the project. Most of the work is taking place on significantly disturbed riverfront area or previously paved or currently paved areas. Um, and the resource areas in question are not ex expected to receive significant adverse impacts due to the work. Um, and the next three slides are the project plans to show you exactly where the work is and the impact numbers. So this is on right outside Tom's hot dog stand. So we have our river, our BVW buffer zone in the red check line. 
and our RFA is outside that and it's a little hard to see, but there's a green check line and you can see the 200 foot RFA. Yep, there it is. So those are our number breakdowns. It is, I believe, 425 feet in the BVW buffer and 212 feet in the RFA. Um, our temporary impacts will all be reseeded with loam and regular seed after the work is completed. The next two slides are at the location two, uh, outside 233 State Road. So here it's the same symbology. We have our red BVW buffer, which we have 361 square feet of impacts currently, and 277 on these two pads of impervious surface in the RFA. Um, we wanted to add, we had part of the plan set got cut off, so we added an additional page to show you the rest of the work. So on the south side, we have the two additional sidewalk areas. Now, the one on the south side is in what's now mainly a gravel and paved area. There, That's where the they look like brick pavers are stacked up. Um, and on the north side, there is manicured lawn, roadway shoulder, and on the interior of the roadway. That curve you see in the top left-hand corner of the screen is pavement will be removed about 100 square feet, and that will be converted to loam and seed. So in total, we had across the project about 1,500 square feet of increased impervious surface. Um, now, some of that is over what can be seen as paved area, but that is the total amount of impacts within RFA and BBW all together as one lump sum. Um, that number is spread out amongst the project. And certain areas, like I had mentioned, are already highly disturbed and within the roadway itself. And if the commission has any questions, Melissa and I would be happy to answer. Do you want me to stop sharing or, or put it on a certain page? Yeah, um, I mean, if you go back to slide seven, just go to the right a little bit. I just want to look at the image a little differently. To zoom out, just, yeah, okay. Yeah, so this area over here is what got cut off. And so we, we tried to provide it on the next slide. No, I just try to, I was trying to figure where it's in relation to Christian Lane. I'm, yeah, I'm trying to figure out if this is the park. I'm just trying to. Christian Lane would be to the south. So to the left hand side of the page. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. So it, north is directly to the right on this page. North is. Okay. I'm just, yeah, yeah I'm trying to look at it. I'm like trying to picture it because where the, the yeah, thing is. Okay. The castaway is at the bottom of the screen and the mm. is that a part oh, oh that, i see I i'm looking, I'm looking at opposite. okay okay that's what i'm seeing oh, thanks scott yeah i was looking at it reverse wise yeah because the driveway was throwing me off okay yeah uh any questions or comments commissioners no no nothing for me anybody from the public that would like to ask a question or comment All right. Well, the uh, question as I see it, or as I frame it, is that this will involve work within the riverfront area. And the question is, is the work minor enough that it can be permitted with a negative determination of applicability? And so I've been sort of reflecting on that question of what is de minimis uh with regard to projects like this or work within the riverfront area and trying to think of what kind of a precedent would be useful in trying to make that decision the one thing that occurs to me is is that we can look at <clears throat> you know some of the minor activities that are listed for riverfront area and buffer zone and 
you know, compare the impacts that are being proposed here with the impacts of things that would be allowable as minor activities, such as decks, swimming pools, and, uh, and, and as we have established by policy, uh, ground mounted solar, residential solar. So I think that if we decide that the, and, and those minor, those minor projects, minor activities are when conducted in areas of lawn, and I would say that the shoulders of the roads are at least uh, is are comparable to essentially a lawn. And so the question is, are the impacts being proposed comparable to like a swimming pool or a deck or or some other minor activity that would be allowable? So I, I'll put that out as a way of framing perhaps the, uh, the the decision that we have to make and invite any comments from uh, other commissioners. It's already in a pretty disturbed area. I would say it's already pretty minor if it's already in that disturbed shoulder area. Scott, as, as the uh, when we were on the sidewalk, as the uh, thunderstorms approached, you walked down to uh, check um, whether there was a culvert south of the uh, Tom's. Uh, Tom's location, the first location? Yeah, right. So this was something that I uh, sort of wondered about because I know that that grassy area just off of where you're going to put the bus stop is wet uh, at times. And so my question was, could that be considered a bordering vegetated wetland? Would, would one thing that we would look for is a hydrological connection with the wetland and the stream on the other side of the road um, and so I walked to, to the south to see, and there is, in fact, a, 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 a storm drain there that channels water across the road to the other side. And what I was trying to consider at the time was whether this was should be considered a BVW with a hydrologic connection or whether it's a stormwater uh, facility, you know, Management. some mechanism. Sure. So it looks like. To me, it's like the grassy swale for stormwater because the grade at the uh, southern end of this swale is a drop inlet with a catch basin, and then it crosses the road. So it's not like it's a stream or a wetland, a channel through a wetland that is then passes through a culvert. It really looks like it's meant to channel stormwater uh, and then is treated in a catch basin before it's then discharged across the road to the other side. So I would be, tend to say that it's a stormwater facility and not um, a regulated wetland. Yep. Yep. Um, Melissa or Daniel, do you have anything else you'd like to mention or, or make an argument for in terms of de minimis impacts? Um, just in the, the aspect of how disturbed most of this project is, and it's, it's, if you go on street view, I, you all live there. So it's a lot, a lot easier for you to, uh, see it. I know the site visit wasn't exactly, uh, the most conducive <laughs> that, that thunderstorm was pretty potent. Um, but most of it is, if it's not already fully paved, it's chunks of torn up pavement and asphalt that have just been settling in over the years. So there's a lot of this area that even though it is the roadway shoulder, I'm not sure how pervious it is currently. Um, it, it's all quite compacted and seems to not be providing a lot of functions and values in terms of hydrological conductivity or in terms of you know what we would like to see for clean riverfront area so i would propose and and we can make this like a motion that we can debate but i would suggest that we issue a negative determination of applicability and treat it as a minor activity uh is anybody opposed to that idea no no, no. Not opposed. All right. 
All in favor of issuing a negative determination of applicability without conditions? Aye. 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 All right. And then we're finished with this then. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, it's been a pleasure presenting for the first time to the Waitley Conservation Commission. Thank you. Did a great job, Daniel. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank you, Melissa, for putting up with my outburst. And, and you know, it's more to relay up to the other upper levels that make these decisions that there are commissioners that are grumpy about what's being done. I understand. Thank you for letting me know. Okay. Um, well, thanks for coming and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. And Keith, I suspect you were here because you thought we were going to have a public hearing on the Haydenville, Haydenville Road project. Are you still there? Yeah, I did it. Didn't I wasn't aware that anything changed on that. Yeah, well, we've had like sort of multiple misses on this. Uh, number one is uh, for the site visit on Monday. We were waiting at the town hall to meet with uh, with the uh, consultant and he was waiting at the town offices to meet with us. So we never did make that connection to do the site visit. Okay. And then it turns out there was a mix up on who was going to submit the public notice to the newspaper. So it never got. Uh, properly noticed okay uh, and so we're not able to open the public hearing this this month and we'll we'll have to start in in at our september meeting on the 18th okay very good that's that's fine <laughs> all right keith um all right. it'll give us a chance to to wade through the 800 pages that we got to <laughs> to be prepared for it when we get i know there. there's a lot there's a lot to it okay thank you all, all right, right keith sorry to make you wait that's okay. All right. So now we come to uh, George, your RDA for uh, repair or repositioning culvert on the common driveway off the of Laurel Mountain Road. Um, and uh, as you know, you'll have to recuse yourself from voting on this one. Uh, but you also are open to welcome to speak to it as well. So why don't you describe what it is that you are proposing to do certainly I, I do not have a powerpoint for you <laughs> um what what we have as you saw in the um, in the site view is a uh, culvert on a common driveway shared by four houses um it's been in place since um, approximately 1985 uh it was um made up of is made up of four eight foot segments concrete um, they were joined o over the uh, last several years. Some of those segments have begun to shift. I, I suspect primarily due to frost, um, bringing up the uh, the uh, one of the centerpieces. Um, this provides uh, drainage for runoff. Uh, it's dry most of the time. Um, we get a little uh, drainage there and snow melt and. Uh, um, extreme storms, but uh, it, it's not a flowing stream. Uh, what we propose to do is to excavate and um, ideally uh, be able to reconfigure and reseat the existing pipe segments so we have a, a continuous um, culvert across. If we um, uh, develop any problems doing that, we can um, we, we have provisions to uh, cover our excavation there with steel plate. Um, one of the property owners um, owns excavating equipment. We will be doing the work ourselves. Uh, I think that covers it. Um, Carl, Carl is another of the property owners. Uh, Carl Long, who's on the uh, on the meeting here and who has been a observing uh, our packed agenda, which is <laughs> not entirely typical, Carl. <laughs> Luck of the draw. Um, so we're looking for a, a, a determination of uh, applicability to uh, see um, how we can proceed. Questions? So if you can't put the pipe back together, there's some problem with that. You're just putting plates over it. Is that what you're going to do? Temporarily. And, and uh, 
we, we've got a couple options for replacement culvert should we need it. Okay. Um, the town has some culvert of comparable size that they are uh, going to um, uh, get rid of through surplus. And so we'll, we'll see. Uh, and Keith has left now, so I can uh, speak to him again about what the cost would be for that. Barring that, we have two suppliers of culvert in town um, between um, uh, George Goodridge's operation and the operation behind the uh, behind muffins. Um, and those are the two uh, vendors who the town typically deals with for culvert. Okay. So. Thank you. Andrew, any questions? I'm good. It's like I said, pretty straightforward project, like I said. Yeah, so the, the key issue for before us is that if if this is a, a stream, then that's a regulated resource area would probably require the filing of a notice of intent. And so the the main question I think for us is is it a stream and if so, where does it begin? So with the definition being that a stream is where water flows in response to a hydraulic gradient through a divine defined channel in the ground. And then, uh, you know, to my eyes going there, there there was no channel, defined channel in the ground upgrading of the culvert. So in, in my opinion, there's no stream above the culvert. Below the culvert, there is a channel, but it all appears to be upgrading of other resource areas. So it's not considered a stream unless it's uh, bordered by or downgradient from other resource areas. So. Uh, it, it appears that there's not a stream directly above it, and there is an argument that the stream there's no stream to below it, mm -hmm. you know, by definition, and therefore it, you know, the work could be done under a negative determination of applicability, provided that it's done carefully, you know, when it's dry and and in, its, in a way to avoid erosion and uh, sedimentation down downstream. So, uh, and Andy, what do you think? I think it's a negative determination. Like I said, there's, I didn't really see, like you said, a stream up, upstream of it. Like you said, and if that, like you said, with the qualifier, of the downstream part not being connected, I could see that not being a stream as well. Like I said, there was a channel, but like you said, not a stream in by definition. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. Uh, so I guess I would suggest that we do a negative determination of applicability with a condition just that it should be done dry and in such a manner as to avoid erosion and sedimentation to the streams further down, down gradient. Makes okay. sense. Yeah. <clears throat> Sound okay to you, George? Carl? Yeah, sounds fine. Yeah, absolutely. I learned a lot in this process, so thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And you're welcome to come to any meeting you want. They're all public <laughs> meetings and they're, they're they're rarely as riveting as they are tonight, but uh, they're still uh, meetings. <laughs> all right. All in favor of negative determination with that one condition? Aye. All right. It's unanimous among the three of us with George abstaining uh, or recusing, I guess, not abstaining. Um, all right, thank you very much. Uh, and now we're getting much closer to the end of our agenda. Uh, next up is approving the minutes from the July meeting. Anybody see any corrections or, or additions that need to be made? No, no corrections or additions. No. All right, all in favor of accepting the minutes? Aye. 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 All right, and there's one other item of business I did not, I forgot to put it on the agenda, but it goes under other business. Um, let me pull it up. Um, so we received an email from, from Peter Kane, the town administrator that the select board has approved a plan to create a new study committee for Waitley to specifically look at ways to regulate the siting and construction of large-scale battery storage facilities. 
the committee, which includes designees from a number of town boards, as well as one at large resident, um, and the boards that they want representation from include Planning Board, Conservation Commission, Board of Health, Ag Commission, and Energy Committee. So we need to put forward a representative from the Conservation Commission that will serve on this committee. Any volunteers? I'll do it unless someone else is particularly eager to do it. Tell you, George. <laughs> Yeah, if you didn't speak up, we would have to give it to Monty, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, she uh, she's did, already got the housing, so she did I housing. Know. She did housing, you know. Yep. All right. Well, it sounds like people are happy with that choice, George. So I'm happy to to put your name forward right. as our representative. And you can give us all the wonderful updates on the progress of your committee as they occur. Will do. Mm -hmm. That's all I have for the agenda. Does anybody else have any updates or other business? No, nothing new. Nope. All right. Oh, we did okay. We got it's a seven fifty three. It's less than an hour, so we haven't yeah. broken our record yet. But we did have a full meeting for a change. Do we have and things to sign? Yeah, we'll have things to sign and I'll let you know when it's there. It may take me a couple of days to get the paperwork because we had three three DOAs that have to get out. So uh, I'll have to see when I can get that stuff down to the town offices. The problem is if I don't get it out tonight, then the offices are closed on Friday and Monday is yeah. the earliest you can get there anyway. So it's all a matter of whether I can get to it tonight or not. Um. What was the other thing I was thinking of? Oh, just that, you know, this, this notice of intent for the Haydenville Road, um, you know, I got an email back from the consultant saying, well, hopefully we can cover as much as possible during the site visit and and during the meeting in, in September. So I think they're hoping to get through the whole public hearing and a decision made at that meeting. Uh, I have two hard copies of the... Uh, of the notice of intent. I will hold on to one of them for myself to review. If anybody would like the other one, I can drop it off in our mailbox and you can pick it up there or uh, you can swing by and pick it up at the house. But we should try to do what we can to just familiarize ourselves with the project. And, and even if you don't know what's good, bad, or indifferent about the project. If there are questions that you have, you know, feel free to write them down because sometimes just asking good questions is a way of getting at issues that perhaps didn't get well covered in the design pro process. And uh, I will I will plan to do the same. Can you leave that report in the mailbox? And yeah, I'll have to see if it'll fit, but- um, Yeah, okay. <laughs> just so you know, it's it's eight hundred and seventy pages, Carl. It might take a little while to get through it all. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two I documents, see. but the the second one is stormwater management report, and that stuff is so tedious that I will probably yeah. just read it like this. Yep. Okay, no, well, never mind that then. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I'll send you this part then. All right, much more manageable. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Um, and oh yeah, I need to forward to you the uh, the comment letter from Mark Stinson for this project because he had some comments about things that need to be Good. Good. Um, addressed. And there, there may be a couple other things I need to forward as well, but uh, I will try to get caught up in the next couple of days. Could you okay. resend that to me, Scott? I think I lost it in my email somewhere. So if I put it in a file, when my files, when I saved it, could you just resend the, the large file? The notice of intent, yeah, yeah, yeah. It Thanks. it was a it was a link. It was a link within a message. So you oh. just have to click on that, and then you download this enormous file. Oh, okay, okay. Maybe I can find that link. Yeah. If you don't, let me know, and I'll send it to you again. All right. I think we're maybe finished with this meeting. Yeah, if I may, just a, a quick um, heartfelt thank you to this commission for your all the work you do behind the scenes, all that hard work of helping make Waitley a great place. Uh, you know, I, this is my first exposure to it, and uh, I'm just deeply grateful uh, for all that you do uh, on behalf of the town. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Yeah, thank you, Carl. Yeah, a lot of what we do is invisible and there's not a lot of glory to being the town <laughs> regulator. So <laughs> your, your comments are well received, you know, thank you so much. Absolutely. Glad you could uh, could 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 come in and see what it is we do. All right. Good night, everybody. OK, uh, thanks, I'll be in Scott. touch about scheduling the site visit for the Hiddenville Road thing. We're probably going to need a significant amount of time mm. to see all the things that they're, they're going to show us. But uh, we'll get there. All right. Thank you. All right. OK, great. Thanks. thanks. All right. Bye. Good night, Bye. everybody.